Good evening. A daughter's disappearance and a web of lies ends in heartbreak. Channel 2's investigative reporter Joe Burke has more on a father's quest for answers and how the cover-up of his daughter's murder fell apart. Jill? Mike and Alexis, police found the body of 19-year-old Cynthia Hoffman last night near Thunderbird Falls. She was bound, shot, and placed in a river, killed by a younger teenage boy as her friend stood by. There's another picture of my daughter sitting there. In the Hoffman family, the kids check in, often and on time. In this family, you all have bones. And when dad calls, you answer. I don't care if you're in a church and the holy pastor's preaching. I don't care if you're at school taking the high school diploma test. If dad calls, you answer. So on Sunday, when daughter number three didn't call, didn't pick up, dad knew what dads know in their gut when their child needs them. I put out search parties. I drove my motorcycle through woods and on bike paths. I floored it all over town doing speed limits that I shouldn't have been doing, looking for my kid. At 19, Cynthia Hoffman was a legal adult, but her father, Timothy Hoffman, said she had learning disabilities and had book smarts closer to a middle schooler than a high school graduate. That's where the phone calls come in, part routine, part lifeline. So for her to not call was a big red flag that something terrible had happened because she would have called. And Tim and I were talking and he says, I know, I know something bad is happening. I know she's dead. He could feel it in his bones. One of the last people to see Cynthia was her friend Angela, who told Cynthia's father she dropped her off here at a nearby park. And in the hours and days that followed, texted with him, sharing in the concern. As I hope she comes home safely, she's my best friend. I'm starting to get worried. I know she will come home safe. But the story unraveled. The park drop-off turned out to be a lie. Police say by then, Cynthia was already dead. It's just such a waste of a life. I don't... She's a kid. Cynthia's body was located Tuesday evening in the river near Thunderbird Falls. We're still investigating to find out exactly why she was bound and, uh, and then why she ultimately was shot. The only thing I can imagine is she was yelling her daddy's name. And it goes through my head over and over and over again. Police say Cynthia's resistance to whatever her and her friends were mixed up in likely got her killed. Shot, then tossed in the river after she panicked and threatened to call police. Threatened to call for help. This time I couldn't keep my daughter safe. I feel that I let her down. Because I keep all my kids safe. 16-year-old Caden McIntosh is under arrest, charged in Cynthia's death. Her father attended McIntosh's arraignment this afternoon, hoping to block his bail. Is this because my daughter wanted to call the police because she panicked? Was it a good thing? If she was able to call the police, he probably wouldn't be behind that window. I hope he goes straight to hell. Police say they don't yet know if Cynthia's involvement with the trio and the trip to the woods was voluntary. The trio, they say, may have been taking photos of each other bound, but at some point, Cynthia didn't like what was happening. She threatened to call police to report that she'd been kidnapped and sexually assaulted. According to charging documents, Angela, known to the police as Denali Bremer, had a gun with her, and McIntosh used that gun to kill Hoffman. Police say they made up the story about dropping her off at Polar Bear Park, and they took evidence, including the gun and Cynthia's belongings, to Mountain View Lions Park and burned them. McIntosh is being held on $100,000 cash bail. It's unclear why Bremer doesn't face charges, although police statements indicate she told them she did what McIntosh said because she feared him.